Today's video is made possible by Squarespace. What's up tech fans, Kevin here on Tech of Tomorrow, keeping up the momentum because we've just had games back to back to back since the end of February through this month. And today, we're talking about a game from one of my favorite developers based on one of my favorite TV shows, South Park The Stick of Truth. Now this is a game we've been waiting a long time for, it's been pushed back several times, initially due to some development errors, then the fact that THQ went under, and then Ubisoft picked it up and pushed it back a couple more times. And now it's finally here, so we get to find out if it was worth all that wait, today on Tech of Tomorrow. Now for those of you that haven't heard of this title, The Stick of Truth is a turn-based RPG based on the South Park franchise, brought to us from the guys over at Obsidian Entertainment. Now this is the company responsible for a lot of RPGs like Fallout New Vegas and Alpha Protocol, and consists of a lot of members from the former Black Isle Studios, which was responsible for a lot of big name RPGs like Baldur's Gate. As the player, you take on the role of the new kid in town, a silent protagonist that you can completely customize, or at least as far as customization goes, in a world made of paper cutouts. The story is one gigantic event of LARPing gone way too far, and pits you and the friends you make against all kinds of ridiculous enemies, whether it be other kids, aliens, giant rats, or Nazi zombies. To begin with, the RPG mechanics in this game are exceedingly simple, but in a good way. You have four classes to choose from at the start, fighter, mage, thief, and Jew all of which simply determine what special attacks you have. There's no stats, and any class can equip anything, so your character's appearance is entirely up to you. Combat feels extremely reminiscent of the Mario and Luigi RPGs for those of you who have played them, with a heavier emphasis on timed button presses and inputs to make moves work as effective as possible. During a fight, your lead character can attack, use items, activate a special class ability, or summon powerful characters once a day to wipe out enemies. You'll also normally be accompanied by one of the other major characters from the series, which you can change out in the middle of combat. Each one has a different type of attack, special abilities, and even a special quick action that gives them a certain tactical benefit, depending on who you're fighting. Now, one of the more interesting mechanics in the game, though, is that you can end up winning a lot of battles without even starting them. While walking around and exploring the town, there's numerous interactables you can work with, and over time you'll gain a lot of special items that can open up even more options, like being able to shrink yourself, teleport, or shoot a bow. Making use of these can oftentimes create and set off traps to knock out enemies, either reducing how many people you have to fight in an actual battle, or even just clearing them all out and getting XP as though you had fought them. While it does make leveling up a bit easier, there's still plenty of unavoidable fights that you'll have to learn how to play, and winning fights with the environment is just an awesome idea and rewards players for paying attention to their surroundings. Now of course, these special exploration abilities have more uses than just for combat. The town of South Park is filled with lots of different collectibles you can find, such as Chinpokemon, hidden chests with items in them, or even side quests to complete in order to unlock special new summons. There is even a constant side quest goal of making as many Facebook friends as you can with the residents of South Park, earning you special perk points whenever you reach a certain number. There's never really any major points of no return, so players can feel at ease taking their time doing the side quests they want, or just rush through the main story if they feel like it. There's a fantastic sense of pacing to this game that just seems to have crazy things happen back to back to back, yet you always have time to just run around and do what you want. Now you've probably noticed looking at the gameplay that this looks exactly like an episode of South Park, and this is one aspect of the game that I just can't stop praising enough. The change between gameplay and cutscenes is seamless at times, and it really does feel like you're playing a part in one big episode. All the animations work just the way they look like in the show, right down to the character's running animation of just shuffling along sideways. This creates an incredible sense of immersion for series fans, and is one of the best examples of another property being translated into a video game. Now of course there is one downside to this game for some of you out there, and that is of course the fact that it is South Park. And just like the show, and even more so at times, the game does not pull punches when it comes to foul, racist, or sexist humor, and it does everything it can to anger the easily offended. Just about every 15 or 20 minutes it somehow finds a way to once again surprise you, covering a number of taboo subjects in recent pop culture. And at the same time, this is of course a boon for fans of the series, as it's also riddled with tons of references to episodes from all seasons. Whether it's a song or advertisement playing in the background, a specific NPC or side quest, or even just looking at one of the characters' closets, there's just too many references to keep track of. And it doesn't stop there, the game is actively self-aware that it is a game, and so there are numerous jokes played on popular gaming conventions, whether that's having to take turns when fighting, or discovering audio logs in dangerous places. 
In the end, I have to say that South Park The Stick of Truth is a fantastic game. While it's not the most complex or difficult of RPGs, it throws just enough difficulty your way and makes use of an elegantly simple RPG formula. It's a little bit on the short side, weighing in at between 10 and 12 hours depending on how much side content you complete, but I could easily see replaying the game at least once more to try out a different class or make different choices in what few decision moments the game has. If you're not a fan of South Park, then obviously this game is not for you. But if you do enjoy the series, then this is easily a must-buy. It's simple, pure fun, and most importantly, hilarious if you enjoy their sense of humor. South Park The Stick of Truth is one of the best adaptations of a TV series to video game, easily worth paying full price for. Well, that was our review of South Park The Stick of Truth. Before I get out of here, though, I want to take a quick moment to thank the people over at Squarespace for helping make today's video possible. Now, if you haven't heard of them, Squarespace is one of the simplest and fastest ways to make your own website. They've got drag and drop functionality and everything is automatically optimized to look good no matter what device you're using. Whether it's your laptop, desktop, or smartphone, doesn't matter, it's gonna look great. They've got a great support staff working out of New York available 24 seven, and pricing starts out as low as eight bucks a month with a free domain if you sign up for a year. For those of you that are interested in trying it out, Squarespace was awesome enough to give our fans the chance to not only have a free trial with no credit card required, but also 10% off your order if you decide you like it and you wanna keep using it. All you gotta do is use the promo code TOT at checkout. That'll let them know that we sent you, gets you that discount, and helps show us some support. As always guys, thanks for watching the video. If you wanna grab a copy of South Park The Stick of Truth for yourself, we've got a link posted down in the description. Now if you enjoyed this vid, please make sure to let us know and show some support by hitting that like button, as well as subscribe if you haven't yet because we've got more great reviews on the way, including covering games that are some of the most anticipated of the year, like Dark Souls 2 and Titanfall. Until then, I'm Kevin for Tech of Tomorrow, and we'll see you later.